Director of the Downtown Development Authority, City of Jackson, Corey Mays. Hey, Corey. Hey, Bart. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And so Corey is DDA director for just uh, how long? How much longer? Maybe another three or four weeks, give mm -hmm. or take. We'll see how it goes, but we're getting pretty close. So what happened? You got a new job? I and did. Where? What? Uh, I'm working for the City of Jackson now uh -huh. officially as the grant coordinator, so in the uh, community development department. Hmm. Nice. Well, I, I've seen the evidence of your ability to uh, get grants and do all the applications and everything, so I'm, I'm sure you'll do a fine job. Oh, that's very nice of you. Thanks. It's very rewarding work for sure. But we'll miss you on the DDA. You know, I can still come back from time to time and, yeah. uh, you know, drive a car and sling a hot dog. Yeah, I, I think, I think there can be arrangements can be made. So when Corey announced he was leaving the DDA, I thought, well, this would be a good time for me to leave the board. So we both, we're both going out together. We are. So. I, we, owe, we owe Bart a plaque or some sort of <laughs> commemoration for his over three decades uh, of service. Yeah. Uh, save it and spend it on bigger cups. <laughs> you don't like those? <laughs> no, they're wonderful. So the downtown social district starts this Friday. St. Patrick's Day. And this is the cup that um, it's pretty much, this is the main part of the social district, the cup. The cup, you, if you want to drink and you want to be in the social district, it's got to be in one of the cups. All right. So how does this all work? Well, so first, just so everybody knows, we're getting bigger cups. <laughs> <laughs> These are more like bathroom glass size. We made a little mistake when we ordered. So we've got some bigger cups being delivered in uh -huh. about an hour. So oh, wow. um, how it works is that you go to a bar or restaurant that's participating. There are eight of them so far with a couple more hopefully signing up mm -hmm. soon. And you order a drink and they'll serve it to you right in here. Um, and then you can walk around with it to anywhere, anywhere in downtown that's in the approved map. And as, as you can see there on the screen, it's a pretty big area, highlighted mm -hmm. areas, uh, but it's pretty much between uh, Blackstone and MLK, uh, Louis Glick and Washington Avenue. So a big box. You can walk around in any, any public area, street, alley, sidewalk, and you can carry your beverage with you. You can walk and talk with your friends and have a drink and uh, mm -hmm. maybe you go meet some friends in another bar if they're already there. And then when you're done, you can pick up another one. No kidding. There's no fence or anything? No, no. Wow. There's, there's that boundary. And of course, we trust that people are going to make wise choices and stay within it. We'll have some signs so that remind people where to go. Right. It's something that came about from the pandemic, Did right? It. And it's happening in other communities. I've seen it in Chelsea, mm -hmm. um, Ann Arbor. Grand Rapids, Traverse City, Marshall, Novi, Northville. Um, uh, Saugatuck has one. There's some other. We've talked to quite a number of communities trying to understand uh, what went well for them and also what didn't so we could solve those problems in advance. Nice. So we've got um, an example. You go to Grand River Brewery, you get uh, maybe uh, some uh, something Irish, mm -hmm. Irish car bomb. Sure. I don't know if it would fit in this, but then uh, maybe you've just, you know, had a little bit of it, but you want to check out what else is going on downtown. So you can walk right down that alley all the way to the Dirty Bird sure. with your cup. Yep, you got it. Wow. You got it. Huh. It's as easy as that. Yeah. It's really not overly complicated. We, we know that people will make smart choices, and, and we hope people will toss their cup in the trash when they're done so we don't have a, a litter situation downtown. But mm -hmm. I, I think it's going to be fantastic. And it's basically designed to help support the restaurants because they, and I think when this started, a lot of the have to be outside, you have to be outside, uh, and there were a lot of outdoor dining things, there were. limited space for that. This kind of opens it up. Yeah, it, it really, as you said, it started when restaurants had limited seating capacity during COVID. It was a way for the state to say, hey, we, restaurants and bars, we know that we've told you, you can't have people inside. Mm -hmm. We want to support you. We don't want you to shut down. Here's an option you have so that you can entertain and serve people outside and keep your revenue up and, and keep your exposure up. And, and of course, that was, I think, benefit number one. But what we found is that especially as, as seating capacities were lifted and people could go back eating inside, we had already done outdoor seating in downtown Jackson. It was wildly popular, yeah. so we kept it open. And now at the same time, this becomes another wonderful attraction for downtown Jackson. It's certainly a help to bars and restaurants, but it's, it's just another, another great reason to come downtown. And once every 6.8 years, the St. Patrick's Day holiday <laughs> is on a Friday. It is. So this is an extra, extra uh, I think, uh, bonus for the launch of the district. We were um, not planning to launch it on this day. We were getting everything organized on our end, and all of a sudden we looked at calendar and said, wait, well, hey, St. Patrick's Day is on a Friday. <laughs> and that was, that was it. It was a super easy answer then.
And there's actually going to be a ribbon cutting and all there that? There is. We'll do a ribbon cutting on Friday at uh, 1230 with Experience Jackson. They're one of our financial sponsors of the, the district. Mm -hmm. um, the Jackson Anchor Initiative, another strong financial partner that has helped make this happen. So we've got strong support from the community and of course bars and restaurants are super excited. Retail, retail owners are excited too. I think everybody downtown is, is feeling the buzz. The city actually um, helped restaurants early on in the pandemic. You provided um, barriers, uh, seating, um, signage. There were a lot of things the city did mm -hmm. to allow restaurants to have some outdoor seating areas. They did, and they did it for free. The city was really, really arms wide open to say, hey, we've got these supplies, we've got the people power, we know you're hurting, let's help mm -hmm. you out. And, and it, it was a great gesture from the city and it became something that was so popular, um, no one wanted to see it end. So yeah. we have kept it going. And the restaurants love it too, because the, they have a chance to increase their capacity without um, having to add on to their building. I, I love it. When I bring the family down on a Friday night in the summer, we I don't think we've eaten inside in a good couple seasons. We always grab a table outside, try to pick something with some shade or an umbrella. But then you can say hi to people walking by. Maybe you know someone else who's you know, got their kids out that night. And, hey, how's it going? Stop by and, and, and have a nice chat. And you're outside enjoying the weather, enjoying the people coming by, maybe some live music. So it's wonderful. It'll be a fun day. The kickoff of the Downtown Jackson Social District on St. Patrick's Day, Friday. We'll see you at the launch. Can't wait. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, Bart. Downtown Development Authority Executive Director, Corey Mays. We've got uh, some birthday.